empathy and how it's important for us to be able to, to be in the shoes of someone else because it provides further insights. Uh, and I spoke to you all, you'll recall the story of Plan B, how for senior citizens, the ability to be able to watch online was very important to them. Um, remember that the example we're using is what if we intentionally sought out new members? It begins with the what if, and, and, and that's, so that's where we're at. We began with that question. What if we sought out new members? And what we looked at then was like, let's begin to form it into a question that we can actually do something with. All of this is leading to action, right? The last step is the execution, the how do we try it is the action step. So all of this is leading towards that. So you begin with an inquisitive sort of mindset and move on from there. And today we begin with step number two. Step number two is how do we take the little insights that we've gleaned and we looked at what makes a good insight yesterday, you'll recall, what makes a good insight. And, and now it's like, how do we turn that into the ideas that we can move forward? How do we turn that into work? And the mindset for this step is to be playful. In fact, this is the mindset for, for the rest of the, the next two steps is be playful. You have to be willing to be open to ideas. You have to be, if you begin with rigidity right now, and, and this is actually very important also. We, uh, I was mentioning this earlier this morning is we can't believe ourselves that the church is dying. If we believe ourselves that the church is dying, then all of this work that we're going into is not going to bear as much fruit. We have to be willing to say, God is still at work here, and we're just going to play with that and figure that out. Because if we go into it saying, well, this ship's going to sink anyway, so what are we doing? Well, yeah, then what are we doing? We, so, that, so that's important, that this mindset, that we don't begin with that. So uh, for us, then now the work comes into always, and this is a particularly true of this step, because this is really if you begin with prayer and centering it all on Jesus and the gospel, then this is where the Holy Spirit can really be with you. Because if, if the Holy Spirit is the advocate that Jesus left behind, right? And, and I really believe that the Spirit nudges us in certain directions, points out certain things. So you want to be intentional about inviting God to be part of this. That what we want to do is good work for God in the world. And so that God can be with us in this work, we invite it. We're intentional about that. We can't just assume, which a lot of us do, that just because we're doing this work for the church, it means that automatically it's all holy. We have to constantly be reminded of that. That's why we had a three-year cycle, right, in the RCL. We're reminded of the same stories because we tend to forget some of those stories. So it's in this work that we need to be reminded to begin with prayer, invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. And here's something that's about to happen. What's interesting now, now that we have some insights, our inquiry phase, our what if question now becomes, and this is very important. And don't remember, you'll, you're all going to get all these slides, right? So now our, our inquiry of what if becomes, how might we? So we began with how do we reach, uh, how do we intentionally go outward to, re to find new people? Now that we've done some research and we found out that maybe young people or Latinos or Asians or whatever, whoever the group that we have identified as an opportunity that we went, huh. What if we reach them? What if we sought out families? I am a firm believer. I have no proof of this. I begin with that. But I'm a firm believer that for a lot of people who go to our evangelical brothers and sisters, who go to those mega churches, if you've ever seen how much money they invest in their, uh, in their kids programs, and, and it kind of looks like a small Disney world, that that's part of why they do that is for the parents to be able to do that. So they, so if we wanted to, to reach parents, right? Now we go from what if we wanted to reach young parents to how might we, how the evangelicals have done it in some ways. And again, I have no empirical research of this, only the anecdotal of what I have seen is that they invest a lot into their kids' programs. So now, and you can see how we go from a what if to finding a little bit of an insight to how might we. Because then uh, the, the power of this question, the how might we question, is that Everything is an opportunity. So you, you're setting yourself up when you say, how might we? You're actually setting yourself up for success. And let me tell you how that is. So now that you have those insights, in the old ways, we may have asked in doing ministry, how do we go west, right? How do we, that, that it was a very generic, open-ended question. Those were the questions that led to throw everything up at the wall and see what sticks. That was the old sort of way of doing that. 
Now that we have insights, we can be much more specific. How might we go to Los Angeles rather than how do we go west? How do we go? How how do how might we go to Los Angeles? You now have P, a, a location to go to, so you're able to go. You're able to actually ask how might we do that? How might we reach those people now that we've seen those insights? And that in and of itself is a game changer. That right there, if, if you do nothing else from there, but to clarify your question, even if you don't follow the steps as I have them here, the, the, these two next steps in, in the ideation and, and execution phase, even if you don't follow them, just having those insights will make the rest of your ministry much more clear because you know where you're going. You're much more specific in that. So now we get to this part, and this is, these are the four ways that we'll go into today. Remember I told you, we have some ways to spur your creativity. We have some ways to actually, it's not just you with a pen and a, all right, I need to come up with ideas now for this whole thing. No, no, no. Now you can actually, there are things that you can do to actually create creativity. And, and keep in mind that what you wanna do here is have a lot of ideas. The best way to have good ideas is really to have a lot of ideas. The, the, that's how you will be able to uncover the good ones. It, it's kind of like the, the, the right ones will just come up to the surface, but you need to have a lot in order for the right ones to come up to the surface. It, it, it really, that, that also cannot be un, uh, overstated. It, it's something that just is real, the way that that works. So keep that in mind. So, uh, going back to this, let's begin with our first one, how to ideate. We're going to begin by looking at mashups. And a mashup is when we take things that normally wouldn't go together and we combine them to create something new. So we actually go outside of our own industry even sometimes. Most, in fact, not, not sometimes, all the times. We, we go outside of where we are and we bring them together to do that work. And here's how you do that. You begin with your framing, how might we? And then you pick two sort of unrelated categories. And, and I'll give you an example in a moment that'll, that'll clarify this for you. And then you generate as many elements, as many ideas from each side. It's like, well, this side has blah, 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 blah. And this side has blah, 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 blah. And then you combine them to make, I know that it, it sounds weird right this second. You're about to see how it all comes together. Remember, you begin with how might we? You pick unrelated categories. You pick as many elements of those categories, right? What defines these categories? And then you combine them to create something new. And, and it, it happens, it works. And this is, so again, this would be sort of the way that you would do it. Your first category, your second category, and you just begin listing those elements. And here's an actual example. The IDEO, the company that, that came up with uh, uh, design thinking, the way that they said is like, they, they began to, they were working with a hospital and they wanted to create something different, new, new ways of people being. And so they started listing things in the hospital, right? They're, they're very stay, uh, they're very uh, clean. Uh, they're very, they just listed all these things. That it's like, you can't get food when you want to, when you, they bring you the food, it's not necessarily what you want. All these things that they listed on there, you see where this is going, right? And then they looked at what is sort of, uh, what's another industry that, that could, might be somewhere in the vicinity of this. And they happened to pull up uh, hotels. And they listed all the things. And one of the things that they listed was hotel mini bars. And when they, when they were looking at all the lists together, it is only then that, they, that they're able to go like, well, if in the room that's so sterile, what if we added a mini bar? But it wasn't a mini bar that actually had alcohol. That wouldn't necessarily make sense. But what if it was a healthy mini bar? And so they created an actual healthy mini bar for, uh, for the hospital. That, that is what you're able to do with mashups. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to create something for your church that was for your kids program. And you might look at uh, the, the, you might look at some industries where kids are present, right? The, the key would be that, that they're, uh, they're unrelated to you, but they are related to sort of the, the, the segment, the market segment that you looked at. So the way that you would look at, uh, you would look at that is you would say like, oh, you might compare like airlines, right? They have to deal with kids all the time, zoos, you might even go all in with kids and say, Disney World, what are the elements of Disney World that, that Disney World puts together? So what are the things that Disney World does really, really, really well? And then you list other things uh, where kids might be present or not present, or it's like, well, they go to school. What are the things that school do? And sometimes it's in bringing those together that you're able to, you might put a zoo, right? Kids love zoos. All these things, when you list them together, 
that's when you're able to pull from one to go to the other way. For any of you who, who are fans of or actually practice creative writing, this is a tool that's used in creative writing all the time where you, and in fact, they have little cards sometimes that they said, and you are a handyman who is stuck in a, and right, and it's like Mad Libs, who's stuck in an elevator. Or that would that would be the most boring story ever. But um, it shows you my creativity this morning. I need more coffee. But it, you might pull like a, a handyman who is uh, stuck underneath a church. Whatever it might be, it's it's in those pulling of those two totally what seemingly are random things. That's where you're able to see connections. This is one of those where you sort of have to trust that the process works because when you might be listing them, you might be, and this is also where, where it's good to have a team because you might only be able to come up with five like I had there, but what you want is you want more of these. You want a ton of these because then all of a sudden you'll be like, hey, what if we, and, it's, and that's when you put the two together and, and it does work and you're able to find some ideas that way to, to be able to do it. So that's the first one, mashup. Now let's move on to the, to the next one, is other people's shoes. What this basically describes uh, looking at other people's shoes is that you want to be able to, going back to the empathy experience that we did, you want to be able to sort of figure it out, what is the person that we're trying to reach? Again, going back to our example of how might we reach intention, uh, be more intentional about reaching out. And let's say that we wanted to reach younger people. By putting ourselves, so I am no longer a, well, maybe in the Episcopal Church, I am considered a young person, but mostly outside of the church, I'm not considered a young person. You know, I'm 47. And so how do you, how do you, how do you, how do I experience the life of someone who's younger? Well, you're able, from the insights that you glean from the observations and the other, uh, and the interviews and other things, and particularly the empathy interview, uh, empathy experience, what you're able to do is you're able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And what you want to do is you either role play what it would be like for them to show up to your church. How might they fit in, feel, to be able to create a way that actually welcomes them in a way that's authentic to them, which they tell us is very important. Or you might storyboard it. If you, if, if you don't want to like actually role play it, uh, you can, uh, and a storyboard looks something like this, uh, right? Where you just literally draw it out. Like the person comes this way, right? And, and this is the first time. And then they come in for the, uh, but as you're storyboarding it or, or role playing, you're looking at these different people going through the steps. If, uh, if you're creating, for example, if you've determined that what we want to do is reach out to younger people, and the way that we want to reach out to younger people is because is by creating a service. This is very common in our churches, right? Uh, a service that aims at young people. But how many of us take a step to figure out what's the experience going to be like for these young people coming into our church? When they first get to our parking lot, are they going to be lost? Are there, do we have enough signs? Do we have being able to walk yourself through other people's shoes is also where you're able to to, to figure out how they fit into, into your own church. Now, for coming up with ideas, putting yourself in their shoes is trying to figure out, based on what you've learned from them in the interviews, what's their day like? What's their Sunday like? What's their week like? If you are creating a new service, is Sunday morning really the best time to do it? Is there another time that you may want to do that? Is there another time when you may be better able to, to, to get the goal that you want to do? The way to get there, the way to answer that, is to put in your, by putting yourself in other people's shoes, either by drawing it or role-playing it so that you can do that. that. That one, believe it or not, is relatively simple. You don't even have to sort of leave the room to do that work. You can just do it together as a team and sort of figure it out. And uh, when we get to the validation point in a moment, you, you'll, you'll be able to validate whether what you're finding out is real or not. Because uh, it, if you, it also might point to places where you have a gap in your knowledge, where your insights are insufficient. And so you've gleaned a lot, you're, you, you, enough that you think you wanna to reach to this, to this demographic. But if you, you've, if you haven't taken a moment to, to, to I'm sorry, if, if when you get to this moment where you're ideating and you're doing the other people's shoes, you might get to this point where you're like, we don't have an answer to this question. In order for us to really understand them through the other people's shoes, I need to go ask more questions. And so this is a time sometimes where, where, where what happens is you discover that your insights are not enough just yet to create something. 
that in order to really create something that's going to match that, you need to go back and ask more questions or maybe do a little bit more interviewing. So that's, that's what, what other people's shoes is. E-Storm, I love this one because it's easy. Any of us can do it. And the reason why I say text too is because we use this at Tritank uh, in, in the way that we do it. So uh, let me go back here for a second. Let me explain to you what I just said about Tritank. The way that we do it is we have a texting technology that we use and we have what we call our wisdom group. We have, as of earlier this week when I last checked, we had 92 people in our wisdom group. And it's basically just a self, people signed up by themselves on our website to be part of this texting group. And what we do is when we have a quick question or when we have something to run them, I send them a text. And now mind you, out of the 91, maybe like 40 will respond, uh, 30 to 40 will respond, which is not bad. But it gives me sort of immediate insight into people's sort of thinking about a question that I might have. And it gives me, it's, it's, an, it's an ability to, to notice how it's e-storm is related to brainstorm, which is where we're going to spend the bulk of our time in a moment, uh, because it's really one of the best ways of doing it. But e-storm allows you to sort of prime the pump, as it were, to come up with some ideas. It is a brilliant way. So this is how you sort of do it. If you're going to do it uh, in an email, uh, you, what you want to do is you might you you have to ask something. These, these are people who are going to know you. So, but you want to ask something in your in your subject line that's provocative. You want to say something like, "Hey, I really need your help on this," or "Hey, would you would you help us?" Or like if, going back to the example of the mashup of the zoo and kids. Uh, if we mix uh, tigers and kids, is that a problem? Something like that is what people are going to be like. What what is Lorenzo talking? What is he up to now? That he's mixing tigers with kids. This, this will not be good. That's usually when the lawyers would call me up. Ah, you're not really. But just something that will get people to really. And then in the copy of the email, what you want to do is you want to say, hey, I just need a, a few minutes of your time. This is really quick. Then tell them. We have gleaned some insights that have led us to believe. We began with asking the question, what if? Then we gleaned some insights that led us to believe that this is what we want to do. This is the group of people that we want to go after in order to get new people into our church. And so now we're thinking about how might we? And, and then what you want to do is set it up as a question that says, how might we reach these people and, and whoever it is? So let's say it is uh, young people. And you don't want to just say young people or Generation X, any, or Generation Y, uh, no, Generation Y, yeah, the millennials. Because the oldest millennial, by the way, now is 39 so they're not really young people anymore. Generation Z would be younger, and even after that, Generation Alpha. Uh, so you want to be specific in your how might. So you might say, how might we reach Generation Z, and put in there the age bracket of what they they might be. And you can even like, create a character that how might we reach someone, a woman, a girl who is you know 24 years old. It's just left college and it's just starting. The more specific you are, the more specific questions, the more specific responses you're going to get to your question. You can ask them that if, they, if, if, if somebody thinks about it, let's say you were creating something rather than a, how might we reach, if somebody says you need to create an app and your app should do X, Y, and Z, then have them draw it out or have them take a picture of something that they think is good. Or if they've seen somebody in, in San Francisco did a rave mass where they actually had a a service that was that was a rave and it's like okay that's kind of interesting take pictures of those or, or what they're imagining sometimes a picture is really is worth a thousand words so have them share with you it's like do this uh when we were creating our tailgating uh van that, that we're that we're going to launch this well we were going to launch this fall i don't know anymore uh to to bring church to the kids in uh at the little league it's rather if they're not there on sunday we're going to go to them somebody send us a picture that's how we just like oh yeah that does make sense because you can visualize it better and then um what you want to be able to do is uh, if you get a whole bunch of ideas maybe send them back to people say like hey we came up with these three ideas vote on them what do you think what do you think are the ones that, that we should move on? And, and you can get further feedback on them. This is easy. It's, it's email. People can spend a few minutes and they feel like they're involved in the work that you're doing. And this is also how you can expand your team from just the core to, to having more people helping you with this. It is really a cool way of doing it. I encourage you to try it out. It works. And now we're at my favorite one. It really is. Uh, brainstorm. But we uh, brainstorm, all of us think we sort of do brainstorm or we've thought about brainstorm, but there really are some rules that make it more effective for us. So the cool thing about brainstorm 
is that once the ideas sort of start, it's like a spigot, you've turned it on and they're just gonna keep going. And that's really, really kind of cool because then all of a sudden they build one on top of the other. It's like, oh, going back to the example of the, the Little League band, right? The tailgate service. Uh, somebody says like, we need to be with kids. So why don't we just like send a priest and a little uh, chaplain out there who doesn't want a prayer for their team to win? Um, then someone says like, well, what if we actually took a van and actually provided a space where parents could sit into for a moment and be able to, it's like, it's amazing, but there's no way that at the start, you could have known where you were gonna end up. There's no way that you went from, oh yeah, let's go, we wanna reach kids who are playing on Sunday mornings and ended up with a van unless you took the steps in between, right? And that's what's really cool is where the group is going can only be determined by that group. But there is a sort of way of doing it. Remember, you'll get this slide as part of them. So you wanna make sure that you're deferring judgment. You probably have heard this, like, there are no bad ideas when it's brainstorming. And the way that you know, by the way, when there is no judgment is when people are laughing. If there's no laughter going on in your creative session, something's going wrong in the sense of people aren't gonna be as open if they think that there's judgment being done or you wanna brainstorm in a way that that's jovial. Remember, uh, be playful was the mindset going into this. So you wanna have that. You wanna encourage wild ideas because you never know in that building of one from the other you never know where that the part that someone's building on is the part that someone else will grab onto will be the perfect idea because that building really happens. Now with that, just you're encouraging wild ideas. It is easy for the idea. So every once in a while to start sort of being like, okay, we're all of a sudden now on a cruise over here. That's not where we wanted to be. So just make sure, just be on the lookout, right? That's what Bolo means. Be on the lookout that you, you haven't been hijacked by someone who wants to go on vacation and now you're on that cruise that they're talking about over there. It's like, bring it back, bring it back together. Uh, make sure that it's one conversation at a time that someone's speaking and make sure that everyone is being heard is important. And just sort of like write down what they're saying in a post-it or, or in a headline form, just, but just one at a time. So you can sketch it out as well. It's like, oh, okay, I can't really describe it. Let me draw it out for you. What would this van look like? I don't have a picture of me, but just sort of sketch it out together with you all. And what you want to remember to do here is that here, quantity, not quality, quantity matters. You want to go for as many ideas as possible. And, and, and notice how it says there, it's time plus five more. So let's say that you want to come up with ideas. And a good session for brainstorming, by the way, is about 30 to 45 minutes. It's a really like, you're going to get some good ideas. But if, let's say you set up a 30 minute session for, for brainstorming. You want to make sure that in that brainstorming session uh, that you're able to do 30 ideas, at least one per minute, plus five. So time plus five. So if you were going for 40 minutes, you want to do 45 ideas, 40 plus five. It, it, and let me tell you something that, that I guarantee you will happen. The time constraint and the coming up with an additional five is really where you're, you're gonna go deep into your creative sort of like, ah, oh, hold on, ah, oh, it's, it's a flying monkey, it's a, it's a it, that's when, when you're starting to get like even wilder and wild, but it's in the end that the really good ideas are. It's in the end. When you, when you finally, and we'll go through what you do once you have the ideas uh, uh, in, in a moment, but uh, when you have the ideas, when you have the list of ideas, you're gonna see that the ones that have the most sort of power the ones that really feel like good ideas are gonna to be towards the bottom of the list. They're gonna be the ones that were later. If you, if you set it for 30 plus, plus five, so 35 ideas, probably your, your, your best ideas are gonna be past 25. Between 25 and 35 are gonna be the ones that you're gonna be like, wow, if, if, if that worked, that would be really, really cool. That's gonna be amazing. And that's what you want. You want to find these ideas that are really, really cool and innovative because that's where, uh, that's where you're, going to you're going to find it. Uh, and, and with that in mind, now what we're going to do is I'm going to send you off into your breakouts. But before we do, uh, in this breakout where we're going to take a moment, we're going to put you all in groups. So let me just go through this real quick. Uh, you want to make sure that you all, all are able to speak, right? All of you, please speak. Uh, it, it, if you're in a group of, let's see, there's 19 of us here and two of us are, so there's like 17 of us, or if we're in like three groups of four, uh, five or six, uh, that should be great. 
uh, and and uh, you want to make sure that all of you are speaking. You want to follow the rules for brainstorm. Remember, don't be judgmental. Laugh, have some fun with it. Be wild, be crazy, be out there. Keep it focused, though, uh, because the the focus is what's what's going to help us in 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 the work that we do. And I'm going to give you the question that we're going to brainstorm in 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 just a second. So follow the rules, though. Be be correct. We're going to brainstorm for 15 minutes, but you 15 minutes, plural. But you must come back with 20 ideas. That's the key. Uh, one of you, please take notes. This is actually uh, really good. This is, for all I know, there is an experiment for try tank to try in the conversations you're about to have. So somebody, one of you, please take the notes of the 20 ideas, just jot them down, uh, type them up uh, in your chat or on a piece of paper in your, in your computer so that you can have them because I would love to take a look at them. Um, and yes, I, I recognize the fact that this will be a little bit harder for you because you don't have the insights, uh, the, right? We, we haven't gone through the insight step to, to let you be clearer about the idea. So you haven't gleaned like the opportunities that could be like, hey, remember when I interviewed that person and they said blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's when you glean those insights that, that can help with this. But so, which is why I've made it shorter for you all today. So just come back with your ideas. You still have enough amongst five and six of you to come up with 20 ideas, it's no problem. You, you will be able to do that. Now, before we do that, before I send you out though, I just wanna make sure, are there any questions on what we covered so far about brainstorming uh, that you wanna go through before we go? Anybody has a question otherwise? All right, Jody, can we send them out? All righty, they're gone. Thanks, friends, see you in a bit. You didn't tell us the question. Oh, oh my God, sorry. Everybody come back, everybody come back. Nobody go anywhere. <laughs> well, fine if you're gonna be that way about it. Um, here we are. Here's your question. Uh, whoops, that was on me. How might we reach young, younger people? How might we reach younger people? That's, that's a specific question. How might we reach younger people? You need to come back with 20 ideas. And I'll put, them in, I'll put the question in the chat box now as well. So how might we reach younger per people? Did you put the question for them? Yep. Jody, thanks. Because I think you can actually enter the rooms whereas I cannot. There's always one person listening. That's good. <laughs> Olin Taylor, do you need some help finding your room or are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Just making sure. So we went at some information, which will make our idea even better. Now think about it, if, if you were still sort of looking at, at that question, and you, now you would have very specific questions to go back to either secondary research or to interview people with, and be like, hey, let me, let me just circle back with you in the interview. I just want to come up with, can I ask you some specific questions that I have about blah? You know, how your independence from your parents or, you know, those things. Excellent, which is which is great. We all would, most of the time we tend to think of brainstorm as only for new ideas, but it also lets you know what else, what don't you know. And for us, well, that was the first statement that we had. I'm sorry, for us, that was the first statement with, that we had. What, what group are we talking about in terms of young people? And so what we did was decide, well, it could be all age groups, you know, from youth to the parents, um, of young children, and so we started from that framework. Like we wouldn't, we would just target all those groups and just come up with ideas for, you know, summer camps and um, transportation providers of kids and you know, a, adults like you know, that have kids to do like a spaghetti supper. So we just started coming up with ideas for all of the different age groups. 
Okay. And, and I just put a little dash about um, with an initial that kind of put where it was targeting those different different ideas would target people. Cool. 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 And was anybody like super duper excited by any one idea that came up that you're like, oh my. I was muted for a second, uh, but I am unmuted now. I can speak. Uh, was, was anybody sort of like, was there one sort of idea that you're like, oh, that's actually pretty cool? Actually, our group had so many really great ideas that I want to do most of them. <laughs> and so, uh, so we had one um, from Claire, which was car boot day, you know, and we, we got into this conversation where um, someone said, oh, we could have uh, like a yard sale. And then so she brought her perspective from, from the UK that they do something like a car boot Sunday and uh, they have stuff for sale. They have little prayers. There's chatting where people go around and, uh, and um, you know, talk to each other and it's really successful. So I, that was a really um, great idea, I thought, and we'll definitely do that. So. Oh. That, that's great. And, and I'm glad that you, that Deborah, that you mentioned that there, you had a lot of ideas because as, as we sort of continue moving forward here, you'll see that the next step in this is when you end up with a whole bunch of ideas, uh, and we just debrief, is what do you do? So what do you do after the brainstorm? What you want to be able to do is you want to be able to come to narrow your list, right? So I asked you, well, you had 15 minutes, we want 20 ideas. Now you'd be able, because you can't do everything all at once, what you would do is step one is you would vote amongst your, your team, uh, your core team, which of the three or five ideas do we think are the best ideas? Which ones really resonate with us? Uh, which ones sort of feel energy like, oh man, that, if we did that, that'd be really awesome and cool. So that would be step one. Uh, together with that, what you want to be able to do is, is, is look for themes because oftentimes what you'll see is that the ideas that are resonating the most are the ideas that you all sort of like are thematic is like, oh, look, we're, we're sort of theming towards providing this type of thing or doing this type of thing, which is kind of weird. It's kind of neat, kind of weird, whatever you want to look at it. Sometimes you'll be like, oh, these two ideas can actually merge and thus become one. Ultimately, we're, we're heading towards trying one ideas, right? So you, you have five, you, you have 20, you narrowed it down to five, you're able to cluster some of them, merge some of them. Uh, then you, you're like, okay, step three, which ones do we want to try? Which ones do we think? And, and you, you sort of you're like Perry Mason's out there. You're like making your case. You want to be passionate about it. Which one do we think is the best idea? Why do we think it's the best idea? Why do we think that's the, this is the perfect time to do this idea? That's the kind of thing that you, um, that you want. This is the time when, and it's not like a debate like we see now in, 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 in politics now, which is like divisive, but rather it's a, it's a cool debate. It's, an, it's a way of us sharing like, this idea would be great because of this. And this idea would be better, I think, because of X. This is a time. And then finally, step number four is you decide. Uh, whether that is the core team, uh, the team leader, whoever has to make that decision, you know, uh, you just want to be able to, to come up with a decision. And you don't want to stop just because something seems hard. You don't want to say like, oh, we're going to go with the idea number two, even though we all kind of want to do idea number one because idea number one seems hard. So we're going to go to idea number two. I would encourage you don't. Uh, this is a time, particularly after something like this pandemic, for us to really be bold and try ideas that, that we can really do well with. So once you do that, once you have your like one idea, right now you have your few ideas, you've clustered them, you, you've, you, which one brings you the energy? Now sort of what do you do? What do you do? What is next from that? And that is what step number three is, is to try it. So at, well, look at that, I'm exactly on the dot. At the, we're at the hour mark, so we're gonna take a five minute break just so that we can take a moment to go to the restroom, refresh our coffee. Uh, so go ahead and if you want to just shut off your, your video, your sound, we will be back at 11.05, all right? I'm sorry, 12.05, 12.05. In the UK, so. Oh my goodness. I was wondering yeah. what time it was there. Yeah, it's sometimes hard for me to do my, my meetings with them. <laughs> <laughs> because, so we, what we do is we have tea. I have morning tea and they're having afternoon tea usually when we're gathering. Uh, but at least we were able to share tea. So welcome back, everybody. Hope you have a little bit of coffee and you're ready to go because now as we continue, 
I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again so that you can, we can go back to this part. Um, and here we are. So here you, you've done the research, you've gleaned the insights, you've come up with some ideas, you've narrowed down the ideas, and you finally have come up. I didn't even start this, did I? Uh, there we are. And so now it is finally time to try. Yay, for finally, you're like, Finally, Lorenzo, this whole workshop was called How to Try, and it took a day and a, a three hours into a four-hour workshop before you finally got to the trying part, but we needed to build up to it. Remember, they all have been building to it, and, and there's, there's four parts that we'll be talking about here. I'm going to introduce you to, some of you might already know it, the Mission Campus, and we'll go through it in detail. This is the part that actually will draft out how you try an idea. We'll help develop a minimum viable prototype. That's what an MVP is, your minimum viable prototype. What's the easiest way to test what you're thinking of an idea without having to spend a lot of time, energy, effort, money, anything else. And then finally, we'll figure out how, to, once you're testing it, what are we validating? How do we validate whether or not it is working? And then just try some more. And we'll talk about the little trying cycle um, so that we can uh, introduce you to that. So you can continue to try and iterate and move forward from there. So let's begin with our mission canvas. Uh, the mission canvas is like something else that is not unique to the church. We, and, and I'm gonna blow it up in a second, so don't worry, I just need to read the bottom part here to be clear, because it is a uh, creative Commons. so just as long as we mention it. The mission canvas is adapted from Lean Canvas, which is from the business world, and is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 unported license. What has changed, which is what we need to tell you, what has changed is the headings have changed to reflect mission rather than business. So there, now that we sort of have said this, because we didn't create it, but it, the world needs to know where it comes from. It comes from, it comes from business. Here's what you need to know about it. It should take you about 15 minutes to fill it out. Uh, the order that we give it in is only suggested. You don't have to do it. It's okay to skip part of it. And you'll see in a moment what I mean by that. It's okay to skip if you don't. And you should do one for each of the ideas that ha have moved to this point to help you <coughs> if you haven't already, like if you're still down to like two ideas, go ahead and do one for each. It should only take about 15 minutes for each one of them. So this is what it looks like. This is what, what it really is, is a one page business plan. It's a one page mission plan. But uh, so it normally, uh, if you'll recall the method that we used to do what, uh, that I mentioned at the beginning, is like we would go through all these steps. And one of those steps was that you would write a mission plan. You would go out there, basically the equivalent of a, of a business plan. And you would go out there and write it. And you'd have like 40, 50 pages, which the moment anyone who's ever been in business, the moment that you implement a business plan, it goes from being this theoretical thing and it touches reality. It is no longer valid because the reality has hit it right? And it has been affected by it. And the key is that you spend all that time, energy, and effort, and you don't want to change anything. You're like, no, but I spent so much time on how we would do this, 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 this elevator pit, whatever it is that in, in the plan. When you're only spending 15 minutes, if you touch reality, and you're like, huh, that was not exactly or at all what we expected. We need to adjust. You're much more likely to do it because the investment of your time isn't as much. And, and it's also easier it's, uh, when, when you get to fifth, you could take one of these uh, mission canvases and draw it out to be like a 90 page plan if you wanted to. You could spend uh, 10 pages for each one of these, but what's the point? You wanna be able to get to the point as quickly and as easily as possible. This will also be included as a fillable PDF in the email that you will get from this so that you can actually do it online or share it with others so that you can do it. Um, but so let's go down. I'm going to go down through all nine parts. What this actually does, think of it as a checklist. It's forcing you to look at all these different areas because that's, what, that's a holistic look at your idea. It allows you to look at it from how are we going to fund it? How is it going to be? All these things that you might be able to do are all in here. So it's like a checklist for those things, but it's all in one sheet of paper for your plan. So let's begin. Uh, the job, the need, what are... What, what you're actually doing here is you're, you're actually, when, when we call it a job and need, right? You're doing a job, you're doing something, you're, you're filling a need by what you're doing. So what is it that people who are seeking your church are actually seeking? What is it that they want to find? Is it that they, from the five whys, remember, is it that they want to find that transcendence that makes their lives better? Is it that what they're trying to do is that they're trying, because 
here's what happens oftentimes. We think that because, because we put an offering out into the world as a church, that it should just, no questions asked. Let's just go ahead and, and do it, right? People are just going to show up because we're offering something to the world. And for any of us who've ever done ministry and you, you do all this planning and you're like, this is going to be the best little thing that we're doing and nobody shows up. And this is from people within your church. You know that that's not necessarily what happens just because church is doing. It does not necessarily follow that people are going to show up. So what you're actually, what that means is that you're meeting a need that people have. You're meeting a need of what they're seeking. So for young people, uh, going back to that example, you might say that the, the need that's being met in their lives is that they have realized with this pandemic that life is different and it is not just about more job, more money, more car, more house, but rather, rather that there's a, there's a need that we have innate to us to find the transcendence, to find God. What, what, what St. Augustine would call, our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. So the need that, that these young people might be seeking is that need for transcendence. So, and they're the beneficiaries in, in, in this example, the ones that you're doing something for. Uh, so, so once you are able to identify that need, what you want to do is, and, it, and you'll see they don't necessarily go in order. You go from number one to number two, which are the stakeholders. In other words, who are the constituents? Who are the beneficiaries that are going to be, that you're trying to reach? Uh, so you're like, okay, we want to reach young people. And, and this is, going back to the point that Jacqueline was making, right? This is where you want to be as specific as possible. We specifically want to reach uh, young women who are 25 years old and who have just left college. They probably are, 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 maybe have been dating someone for a long time, maybe might be married, probably not. Yeah, now, now that we know young people are getting married later, so they're not there. So you want to be as specific as you can because those are your beneficiaries. But notice how the, the, the title of number two is stakeholders. It's not just the beneficiaries. You want to figure out also here, who else should you be involving at this time? Who else in your congregation will need to be in, informed because they will ultimately be making decisions on these things? Because these are the people that you're going to want to bring in to the conversation at this point. Maybe it's your vestry. Maybe it's the altar guild. They're very powerful. Don't ever underestimate the altar guild. They can stop most things. But whoever it is that you want to, that, that's a stakeholder that, that can have a claim on this or whoever it is. But this is particularly uh, important in like family sized congregations. If there's one person that you know has to be appeased, the matriarch, the patriarch of the congregation, then that's a stakeholder. If there's one person that who's not part of your team, but who can make a decision to stop it, you want to bring them in and bring them in the sooner the better. So just list them there so that you're aware that you need to bring them in. Again, this is a holistic approach, right? It's, it's forcing you to look at who else do I need to bring into this conversation. Number three is your response. So this is the response, to the solution that you've come up with to the need that you presented. So young people are seeking transcendence. And our response, so this is where basically your idea that, that, you, that you came up with to reach new people. And notice what we did here. It, it might be subtle, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, we, we actually didn't begin by listing the idea. We began by forcing us to look at what is this idea actually doing? Because if we're just actually doing it to butts and seats, our idea is unlikely to work. Uh, our idea only works if we're actually working to, we say we make disciples. That's awesome. That is what we do. But the disciples have to sort of know that they need to be disciples. Does that make sense? The disciples sort of have to want to be a disciple. We're not going to beat them over the head. We're done with the times when it was like, unless you come to us, you're going to go to hell. Those that ended in the 60s and, and probably with the Reformation or even like in the Renaissance. So would, would we actually, the, the Age of Enlightenment changed that, right? Where we, it's not about just going to hell anymore. It really is about the transcendence and the, the good that comes from being a follower of Jesus Christ. So being able for them to identify how our solution meets that need, even before we've listed it on the plan, is on purpose. I know that I said that you don't have to follow it in order, but there is a rhyme and reason to the order. But again, you don't have to do it in order as long as you look, you're able to do all of them 
and being able to, to get, when I said earlier that you could skip one, it's like, if you don't happen to have an answer right now to a question, like if you don't know who, let's go back to number two for a second. If you don't know who all the stakeholders are, it's okay to be like, huh, I'm going to have to ask the rector or I'm going to have to ask Mrs. Johnson who knows everything about this congregation, who else should be here. That's exactly what it's meant to do. Yes, you skip the question, but it means you're going to go back to it. It means that it's now forcing you to look further into the, to get that information. So that was uh, where number three, where now we've listed what we came up with as our solution. Then number four is how would you describe that solution to someone? And an elevator pitch, you probably have heard the term. And, and what it just means is that you're able to right? if you got into an elevator and it was going X number of floors, would you be able to tell them in a way that's single, clear and compelling, uh, a single, clear and compelling message that explains what you're trying to do, right? Uh, so how would you describe this idea in a way that's, and, and I try to make it just one sentence, just try to go for one sentence in this because it is really important that you have clarity. It's really important that when someone says, Hey, so what are you going to do? Well, we're creating a service that what actually we're doing is we're trying to reach young people and to get them into the church. And so we we thought about it. No, no, no. You've already lost the people in the elevator. What you want to be able to say is like, we're creating this really cool way so that young people can feel the transcendent power of Jesus in their lives. And we're going to do it by creating a special yoga service that's on Thursday nights. Bam. Simple, clear, and compelling. Someone can be like, they can be totally against it. So they can be like, no, nah, that'll never work, which is fine. You're going to have the naysayers out there. But at least you were clear and compelling enough that they were able to get it to say no. There will be naysayers all the time. So you want to be able to develop your elevator pitch. It's okay. This is why you have a team, right? It's okay to be able to share it with others and be able to like, does this make sense? Is it getting the gist of what we want? And you don't want to go into the weeds of all the details, but you want to be able to maybe mentioning Thursday night's not as important. I think it is. And when I just said it, because I think Thursday nights would be a good time to, to do kids for to do things for younger people in our congregations rather than the weekend when they're busier, right? When they have other things going on. So that's number four, your elevator pitch. Number five is your path. And if you see, it says path to your beneficiaries. How are we planning on getting to the young, younger people that we want to invite to our congregation? How are we actually doing the work of, do we have a way of getting to them? Because just being able to say like, well, we're going to create this beautiful thing for, for younger people on Thursday nights. It's a yoga mass. It's going to be awesome. It's great. How are we going to invite them? Oh, we didn't quite think that one through. Uh, so this again is forcing you to figure out how do we get to young people? Do we use Instagram? Do we use, use Facebook, YouTube, however it might be. And again, it might mean that you have to take a moment and say like, I'm going to skip this for now, but I need to investigate this now. I need to now go back to secondary research or other things to figure out how do I get to the young people rather than just putting it out there thinking, well, if I just advertise in the church bulletin, people are going to know, right? And that's going to get us people not likely. You're, you're, that's very inside. Uh, how are we going to reach outside? Are we going to do postcards or whatever it might be? This is a way that you figure that out is you figure out your path. How are you going to get to them? Partners, who's going to help us with this? It is possible that you will partner with somebody. If we're sticking with the idea of the yoga mess, for example, uh, I might think that it's the best idea ever, but I'm about as flexible as a two by four. So I'm probably not the person to do this. This is where we sort of figure out, who do we need that's going to help us with this? Uh, do we have a yoga instructor in the congregation? Does somebody have a cousin that's a yoga instructor in the congregation if we don't have one? Uh, who else? Uh, do we have anyone in our congregation who does marketing? Maybe they can help us figure out the path to these young people, uh, younger people. Is there, is there someone who's really big on Instagram? It's okay to ask that question in your church newsletter. Hey, is anybody good at Instagram? We have some questions for you. That's a brilliant question. You can also outsource some of this. If you have, it's not that expensive. You can go to Upwork or uh, Fiverr or, or peep, somebody would be able to refer you to someone. We did an experiment at TriTank for Facebook uh, advertising. And Facebook is, is just amazing what it's able to do. You can do lookalike audiences. You can do so many things with it. Uh, but I, I don't know it. I don't know it well enough, even if I thought I knew it, to keep up with how often the algorithms are changing. And yet we were able to find one person that we hire 
who charges us a small amount uh, to do it. And so we might run a thousand dollar campaign for, for example, on, on Facebook to advertise something. And it costs us 15%. It costs us about $150, which is pretty cool that you're able to find someone who's a genuine expert at Facebook because the results you're going to get are going to be exponentially better for the investment. If you're already going to invest money on Facebook advertising, for example, it makes sense to figure out who can help us make this better, right? So that if you're going to spend $1,000, you want to get as many people as you can out of it rather than the other way around. You'll recall that I gave you the example from Spin Church when we had 160 some odd thousand people saw the ads. That campaign cost us about 1200 bucks, but we paid an expert. And we were able to reach almost 28,000 people who saw the ad multiple times. That's what you get when you have an expert helping you. So it's okay if one of your partners is not someone who's in the congregation. You don't always, if you, it's, it's okay if you have the resources to spend a little bit of money to get a better return. So that's where you find your partners. Excuse me, number seven is your funding sources. Ah, this is cool. Uh, again, th there is a rhyme to the reason to the, to the, you don't have to follow the order because sometimes people are sticklers and they, they, they feel they must. Uh, and, and so they, it's okay to give you that permission to do that. Do it in any order you are. If you're artistic, go ahead and do it any way you want. Begin with number nine. But if you do follow the order, there's a rhyme and a reason to it. There's a reason why number seven goes before number eight. Not just because numerically that's how they go. The reason is your funding sources is more important when you're looking at it than your expenses because if you first look at how much money you can raise or put towards this and then look at, ex at spending that money is different than coming up with a budget and then trying to figure out how are we going to raise this. So let's say, for example, that you're, you're, you look around, you're like, huh, we're able to come up with $800 for this whole thing. I think we can, you know, we can get $500 from the church and there's three members of this team who each will put in 100 bucks to make this happen. Great. Now you know you have $800 to spend in your expenses rather than if you had done the expenses first and you're like, okay, with the music and the yoga mats and everything else is going to cost us $3,000. And then you get to your funding sources. You get to that same 800. Guess what you just did? You stopped it. You literally killed an idea simply because of the order in which you did that. So it's always much better to figure out how much you, you're going to have to spend and then say like, can we make it work for this? Can we make it actually happen for this? What, what can we cut? What can we do to make it work for this? Rather than like, well, if we don't get $3,000, then we can't make it work. It's a totally different mindset that you're bringing to it. So uh, this, those two, uh, the whole thing is, is, is on purpose, the way that it's, it's, it's written out. But those two are particularly, I think, uh, the way you approach it, by like, oh, I have this amount to spend. How do I make that happen? So again, your funding sources are number seven. And how will you pay for the expenses that are about to come up? That's where you figure that out. Number eight are the expenses. But what you actually want to put here are hard expenses, not something that's intangible. So your time and my time working on this is technically an expense, but we're not, it's not actually costing us. What you want to put here is like, what are we actually going to have to put out cash for? What are we actually going to have to pay for? If someone's donating something, that's brilliant. That's awesome. Thank you so much for doing that, Mrs. Johnson. We really appreciate you providing the, the little food that we'll offer at the end, the healthy food we'll offer at the end of the yoga mass. But, we're gonna, but that's not necessarily a hard expense, right? She's offered to donate that. That's amazing, and that's great. So that's sort of how you want to do that is, is, is figure out your expenses that are hard expenses. Uh, and then finally, number nine, which is really important, is your key metrics. How will you analyze whether this worked? When you look back on this, when it happens, will you know that it succeeded? Is it just the sheer number of people? Uh, because now you can have those conversations like, all right, is it more important that we get 10 people or that we get two people whose lives are changed? I don't know. There's probably a time when getting 10 people might be more important than, than going that much deeper with them at this time. Maybe later you go deeper with them. It's important to be able to figure out what the key metrics are because that's how you will figure out which of these things are, are working. That's, this is how you'll figure out what is working. By measuring, by being able to measure these key metrics, you'll figure out if it's working, if it, there's something you need to change. So this is important to, and going from the get-go, from the start, Figuring out how you will evaluate it is important because it's not just always about numbers. It's not just about butts and seeds. So how else might you figure out whether or not you're having an impact with it or, or doing what you want with it? 
So that's the, the, the mission canvas. It's a pretty cool document that, that really does help you figure it all out in one sheet of paper that you can just, and you just saw, it. we went through it in about 12 minutes and I could have, and I've been more or less filling it out. And it's so simple. This is a true, honest to goodness. This was one of the best stories I, I have to share with you. I, I made a presentation in February. Yes, in February I was in Ohio because that's when you want to be in Ohio when it's freezing. So I was in Ohio, I presented to the Diocese of Ohio to 300 people and then I did a workshop on how to try. And in the back of the room were young people and, I'm, and when I say young, they were like 13. Uh, they were, they, it was an indoor water park because that's what you do in Ohio, you have an indoor water park because it's otherwise cold. And so they, but they couldn't go to the water park yet so they had to, they stuck them in my workshop. And in the back were the kids and I, I literally saw them, they were like, oh, you know, like, like written down, their heads down. I'm like, they're just in the back, they're, they're not bothering anyone, that's fine. Turns out a 13 year old filled one of these out. He actually saw it, he listened as I went through it, filled it out and turned it in for how to reach, uh, how to do church for babies, for like really young toddlers. And I was like, how brilliant is that? This actually works. If a 13 year old can do it, we can all do it. So there's that. Um, so that's the mission canvas. Uh, let me go over here so I can move forward. So now that you have your mission canvas, you have a pretty good idea. Now you want to develop your minimum viable prototype. You're, you, before you do that, you remember, focus on those key metrics because in order for it to be, uh, so minimum viable prototype basically says, what is the least that we can try, right? If you're going to do this yoga mass, what's the least way we can try it expense-wise, everything else-wise, to be able to figure out what our minimum viable, you know, whether or not this will work. So you really want to spend some time on this because our, our general idea is always to go, go big or go home. That, that's a very, that's a, for those of you from the UK, that's a very American sort of mindset, go big or go home. So we're like, oh, we wanna do coffee for people, or let's, let's stick with the yoga mask. We wanna do the yoga mask. So we're gonna have to hire a yoga instructor for the next year to do the service. It's gonna be every Thursday. It's like, wow, that seems like a lot when we don't even know if it's gonna work. What might be a minimum viable prototype to try this? So spend some time on this based on those metrics of what you're gonna measure, because from there you can figure out what your minimum viable prototype. So here's how you develop it. You wanna figure out, is there a low fidelity prototype? Like in other words, if I just wanna gauge whether or not there's interest, what if I just set up a page, a web page for it, or a page within our website that's about it? I can figure out through analytics how many people are coming to the page. So if I'm gonna advertise it on Facebook, if I'm, remember how I gave you all those analytics about our ads for, that's how we did it, we created a little, webpage for spinchurch.org and we did all that. It's like, it's a low fidelity, it's very simple. Just like, oh, we'll just create that. But even before like figuring out, you know, what night of the week, we're, we're just gonna figure, there's yoga mass is coming. Figure out how many people are going. Does anybody sort of sign up for an email newsletter that you might offer? Just think that through a little bit as, you, as you're sort of doing that. If, if you are gonna go ahead and do the actual experience, you're like, no, nah, I don't think we need to do a web page. Let's just go ahead and try the service and see what, what our, our own young people think. And if they bring their friends, that's one of the key metrics that we'll figure it out if it works. Is like, are we providing something that our, all the younger people in our congregation will invite their friends to? Ah, okay, that, I see that. So instead of doing it for like, okay, we're gonna do it for the next year, it's like, why don't you do a short run? We're gonna do yoga mass um, during the summer, during the month of August, uh, hopefully you have air conditioning, and we're gonna do it during the month of August, and we're just gonna do it for those four weeks. Try it. When we did Spin Church, we actually did it for eight weeks. We wanted to try different things and iterate them, so we did it for eight weeks. But So you do a, a little season. Advent is four weeks, by the way. So if you're planning on doing something small, four weeks in Advent, there's usually about uh, six weeks post-Easter, uh, which is a great time to do things, by the way, because we get the most number of visitors on Easter. We tend to call it low Sunday, the following Sunday. Like, no, that's when we should be going. Like, those of you who came, come back next week. We're going to do something big. So there's, there's about six, seven weeks after Easter. And, or even like the Lenten season is a good time for people who are thinking about their own mortality and stuff like that. So seasons are, are, are good to try a new service if you're going to try that. Uh, and again, this is a good opportunity to try the role playing again to it's like, okay, if people are coming to church, do we have enough signs? Do we have, do we have just that? That's how will it feel for them? Do we need to move the pews? Is it, is, is our parish hall too hot? Just 
in your minimum viable prototype, you want to be able to, to figure out how you sort of do that work. Then uh, uh, once you sort of figure out what you're going to do, right, you want to be able to, uh, and this is the next step, you, you've, you've, you've developed what you think is going to be your, your actual uh, experiment. This is what we're, and now we're using my terms, right? Experiments. This is what you're going to try. We've, we've come up with the yoga mask. We're going to try it. It's going to be on Thursday nights. Uh, now it's time to validate whether we think it's a good idea. And this is how you validate your prototype. Uh, you, you want to reach out to your potential audience and figure out whether or not this is something that, that could be, that would work for them. So even ask like with the yoga mask, you might ask the younger people and within the same demographic that are already in your church, like, hey, is this something that you think, uh, you know, you already, like, do you go to yoga? Is this something that would, would be appealing to you? There were some insights that led you to this place, right? So you can ask those people again from the interviews, like, hey, you mentioned that you were into yoga and group fitness. If we were to do a yoga mask, would you come to it? This is sort of what we're thinking it would look like. Again, uh, you can validate using a web page to, to, to do that, to, to get people to sort of whether or not they sign up for something, uh, because there's a difference between people that go to a website and people who sign up for something at a website. Uh, and I'll mention that in, in false positives in a second. You can also run Google ads uh, as nonprofits. You're allowed a certain number of free ads on Google, of course. You, hopefully you know about that. If not, just Google that. <laughs> Google, uh, the Google nonprofit grant, you're allowed to get up to $10,000 a month in advertising from Google. Uh, so just look that up. There's many ways of figuring out how to apply for that and they're all free or you can get a cheap book on Amazon on how to do it. Uh, Facebook ads, as I mentioned, is a good way of driving people whether or not there's, but be on the lookout for false positives. Um, so this is what might happen. If you ask, a, if I go to someone in my congregation who knows me and I know them, especially like if I happen to be in a place of, of authority in the congregation itself. And I say to them, Hey, uh, so I have this wonderful idea where we're going to do a yoga mass and you, I walk them through the, all the steps that we got here. They're likely to say, Oh yeah, that sounds beautiful. I totally would go there. Why is it because they think it's a good idea? Mm, maybe more likely is that they want to appease me. They've seen all the great work that I've already put into this. And, and they're like, yeah, I'm totally going to do that, Lawrence. You count on me. I'll be there. And then they never show. These, uh, so the way that you can be on the lookout for false, false positives is by, again, the web page or Facebook advertising, which is where you're reaching outside of people that know you. You're reaching outside of people that, 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 that where you are. If you did do some of that... Um, uh, some of the e-storm, right, where you were able to do brainstorming via email, check in with those people again and say like, hey, here's a, here's a postcard for, our, for a service. Can you share it with your friend and, f and find out for me what they say? Notice how you're not asking them what they think. You're asking them to share with their friends because with them, again, you might be getting a false positive back and you don't want to get that false positive. So by asking them to share with their friends, they're more likely to, to, to feel, even if it's their own opinion, they're more likely to feel like, oh, I can totally tell you the truth now because I'm going to say, I asked my friends and they said that you were just crazy and this will never work. That, that that's, they would never go to something like this. Some of that might be their way of saying their own idea as well. And here's something that's really, really cool. It, uh, is that you really only need, let, let's say that, that you create something and you, you put it out there and only five people show up, that's brilliant. That's all you need. You only really need uh, and five people to figure out whether or not something's actually usable, whether or not something's actually good for what you're, you were hoping to do. So what you see there in red, that, that, that little N, you know, the parentheses, one minus one, that's the actual formula. Uh, if you look at the, here, let me actually be able to share, uh, where's my Sharpie? My spotlight. Here we are. Um, if you, oh, I can't do it because I don't have in my system preferences. Okay, never mind. Uh, so, can you see my mouse? Are you able to see my mouse? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so what you see here is like, if you ask zero people, you're going to get zero. Well, that makes sense, right? Okay, we're all good with math. You all did not expect math this morning. Uh, but if you ask one person, one person is going to give you about 33%. There's going to be right about there 
of usability. They're going to tell you like, well, I tried it and here's what I thought of your mat, your yoga mask. I thought this, that, the other, they, they might give you some insights on you. Like, okay. Thanks for sharing. That's great. Good to know. When you ask the second per uh, the, what happened to my mask? When you ask the second person, they're actually going to be right about here. So you're already close to like 50% because a lot of the things that the second person is going to give you are the same insights that the first person gave you. They're just building on top. They might have a little bit different and that's what you're looking for. When you get to the third person, you're already all the way up here. You're already close to like six, be above 60%. You're almost like at 70% of what you're going to find out. And when you get to five people, you're at about 85%. After that, it's not that worth it to, to, to try to find what that extra 15% that you might find out as to whether or not people would like it, would they come to it, what did they not like. Just from those five people, you're able to, and I say this because sometimes we think, oh, oh my God, we only got five people to come. That could be all you need. Then if, if, if you get good positive feedback from, from five people, it might just be now a matter of keeping it going long enough for it to catch on. It might be a matter of advertising it better. If these five people really, and they keep coming back themselves, right? Uh, then it's going to build up and you can, uh, we'll talk about in a second, the, the cycle, how to iterate, but just five people would be sufficient to figure out as to whether or not this is an idea that you, that you want to pursue. So, and that for those of us in the church is a good thing. So you're validating. You're validating your idea. You tried it. You're, you're ready to try it. You're ready to do it. So now, now comes the trying, right? The actual, now we're going to keep it going for a little bit. We're going to try it for this. And this is the trying cycle. You're going to try it. You're going to evaluate. You're going to figure out from the evaluation of those, the number nine on the form. You're going to be like, okay, we didn't quite necessarily meet this criteria. We didn't really do this. We did really well on this one. We did that. You're going to ask questions. You're going to get feedback. You're going to, you're going to refine it. And you're like, okay, let's refine it. Let's refine. Is it, is it refinable? Because this, the, the last part of the cycle is you either will try again where you move you back over here or you end. Because if you'll recall when I mentioned earlier about the, the spin church, well, earlier yesterday, we decided to end it after that because nobody showed up and we spoke to people. And what we got was that the only way we could have refined it was that we actually would have had to go out into the world and create an actual, um, an actual uh, spin sort of studio that was a full-time studio called Spin Church that people would join it instead of the regular one. So it was way more than what we were like, no, 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 that's not what we wanted. We just wanted to figure out whether or not this was something that people would, would like a church could just rent out a studio and work it out. We don't want to be in the business competing with like Soul Cycle and LA Fitness. We don't, that's not what we do. So we decided to end it based on what we were able to get, but we had evaluation in there. So that's sort of the trying cycle. I right? try, evaluate, refine, try again or end. And that's, and that's how you move it forward. That's how you do the, the sort of work. Uh, and now it's time for me to tell you about a very, very real thing that happens in this work. I didn't think about this until I started doing this work. And I want to tell you a little bit about the in-between. Ah, it's a beautiful time. So how many of you have gone like on a, on a car trip, right? In Florida, most of the time you're going to go, it takes you at least six hours to get out of Florida, you know, with, depending on where you're at. So you know you've got to drive north for a long time before you get out. And when you first start, when you're on like on the turnpike or you're on I-95, uh, you're like, everything is awesome. You may even have the top down. You have Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers on and the radio. I just aged myself. I know that. And you're just like riding along. Everything's wonderful. Things are going really, really, really well. And that's our number one. And then you get to our number two. It's like, oh my God, this is taking forever. When is this ever going to change? And then, because the way that it happens, by the time you get to Orlando, there's traffic and rain. You know, there's, you're like, oh, Jesus, just shoot me now. You're nowhere closer to where you're going than where you were where you left. This is just like taking forever. <laughs> and the finish line, you know, that thing that you're looking for, yeah, it's really, really far away. You're nowhere closer to it. But this is a spiritual discipline. This is a time when we need to know about it. And the way you do it is you know that it's coming. 
you know that there's going to be this time when we first launch something, when we first launch a new initiative, when we like the, the yoga mass, you're like, yeah, we had this great idea. The brainstorming session was awesome. And it was so much fun. And we came up with this idea. This is going to be the best thing ever. And that's, that's you in the top down. That's you just starting to go. Tom Petty's on the radio still. And then all of a sudden you start to bump into like, oh, we thought we were going to get $800. We only got 600. Can we make it work for 600? That's the traffic. Uh, oh, oh, we didn't really check in with Mrs. Johnson, and I think she's against it now. I think she thinks we're ending the church as we know it. Oh, okay, we probably need to do a little repairing of that relationship. Oh, we wanted to do this, but now we're not going to be able to do this until we fix the air conditioning in the place because we didn't realize or they're so bad. Whatever it might be, then it just starts to bog down. It doesn't take away from whether or not the idea is good or not. It's just the reality that things aren't always as good and as nice as they look on a business plan as the reality. It takes time for us to begin building onto them. It takes time for things to, to get on there. So just know that it's coming. If you know that it's coming, it's better. Have friends. I put in there Hardage USA uh, because we, Hardage is an organization from the United Kingdom that we've teamed up with a lot. And these are the, organiz these are the types of, of congregations who are members of Hardage are congregations who think innovatively, who want to try new things. And so they're out there trying different things. And so it's good to have other people with you who, who are that way. It may not be someone in your own congregation. So you have your team, right? But have friends, have others that can help you also. Like, have you ever gone through this? Like, oh, yeah, my congregation went through that. And while these are brilliant things, it's, it's that old saying, right? You can be lost by yourself and it's really scary. You can be lost with your friend. It's just as lost, but it's not as scary anymore, right? Because you have your friends that are with you. I firmly believe that there's a reason why Jesus sent us out two by two is so that when we get to these moments, these in between, you're not quite when you launched and there was a fanfare and you're certainly not where you're going. Uh, and you're at that in between time where you have to do the work. This is also another period where a lot of ideas die because people just think that it was too much work. It wasn't worth it. It, it, this is where ideas go to die sometimes, that in-between time. But if you know that that is coming and, and, and you have friends that can help you with there, and ultimately if you keep praying that God also will be with you, that in-between time is not as hard. That in-between time is much more doable. So now you know, and uh, it is time to try. Uh, you have all the insights that I have given you. Uh, I, I'm gonna one more time plug our newsletter. At tritank.org is where you can sign up to get our newsletter. Uh, we put out invitations to join us in experiments. I'm also a good conversation partner. Uh, if you are thinking of an idea and you want to run it by someone, if you, you and your team have come up with some insights that you're like, huh, we're kind of stuck on this, this part over here. I don't quite know how to move forward. Give me a call. Send me an email. Lorenzo at tritank.org is my email. And just go ahead and, and we'll set up a time to talk and we'll talk through your idea. Uh, it, it, it may not be something that TriTank is able to join you in, but at least a conversation partner uh, to help you sort of think it through would be something that you would need. Uh, and with that, you know, the next slide just says thank you. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to stop sharing and, and open it up for questions. You now know the three steps, right? Uh, you know how to do it and hopefully... Uh, you'll be able to, you'll, you'll, you're going to get this presentation as a PDF. You're going to get the mission canvas so that you can fill them out. So you will have all of this to refresh on. I am working on a book based on this that will be uh, out from church publishing at some point so that you can run your best read through this process as well if you want to. Uh, but yeah, what questions do you all have? Thank you, by the way, for the invite again. You've given us a lot to think about. We appreciate it. <laughs> oh, my, my pleasure. Like I said, it was going to be a lot coming your way, but don't worry. You'll, you sort of have the introduction to it. Now you'll see the, you'll see the, the, the presentation. You'll, you'll go through it. You, you'll have, I'll, I'll add my email also to the, to the presentation so that you have it there as well. Uh, I'm just writing myself a note here so I don't forget to. I'll add it there so you have it at the end. Uh, and if you have any other questions like, hey, what did you say about this? And I know that this was recorded, so you'll also be able to go back to the recording. Yeah, what? Oh. Go ahead, Cynthia. 
Cynthia? I was just going to say thank you for the aha moments, because as you were talking and going through all of the different steps, I thought of different things we tried. And so I don't know if, if you noticed in the chat when you were talking about the road trip leading out of Florida, and I put in there, we are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> because that kind of what happens to a lot of our ideas, people get worn out at that point and give up and say, see, I told you this wasn't going to work. And so just having those insights um, is so helpful to the next process. To and, and to that point, each one of our experiments at Tritank, and as I mentioned, we're at 80, we have 56 experiments. Each one of them has a number, right? It begins with, it, it, all of them are 85 and then 01 was number one. That was the Alexa speaker. Eight, there is, I am still working on 8502. <laughs> we might be at 8556, but 8502 still has not landed. It's, it's still one that I'm working on. That in between was considerably longer. It's a technological question that we haven't been able to figure out. It's just this thing that's there, but it's a good idea and I'm not going to give up on it. it I'm still going to work on it. So yeah, are we there yet? I wish we were, but unfortunately not. <laughs> Deborah, you had a question? I did. I was wondering um, about trying to do a uh, try to project, uh, Tritank idea um, as a diocesan project. Have, um, you know, we're, we're so um, far apart um, geographically. Um, have you ever worked with dioceses that um, they say we're going to take this on as a, um, as a, as a diocesan project? Um, we haven't. Now, uh, some of our experiments, we, we tend to always want to try it in different places. Um, and some of our experiments, like just uh, the experiment that begins next Monday for the crowdfunding in a box experiment, we have we will end up with 26 congregations that are participating with us in there. So, and I'm all like I said, our newsletter is how you find out about experiments that we have coming out because we always want to try. And here's the the we want to try it in different geographic place areas. We want to try it in different sizes because just because it works in a big congregation doesn't mean it's going to work in a small one, and vice versa. Just because it works in a small congregation doesn't mean it's going to work in a big one. So we want to try it in different places to get, because all of that gives us data that we're able to be like, oh, that, that's, in, that's interesting on that one. And for all of them, we try to put out not just sort of uh, like what happened. We try to put out a little report of what happened. But we try to tell people and give as much insight as to how we did something so that others can do it as well if they wanted to. Uh, but if, yeah, you know, as I think through experiments that are coming up, I'll, it might be kind of interesting to try whether or not with a cluster of churches, like from a diocese, uh, I don't think you would be able to get all like 76 of your congregations to try it one, but uh, it would be kind of neat to try it in, in a whole bunch of congregations in one area to see, you know, see how that works. Yeah, I'm totally open to it. Okay, yeah, I think that might be really neat, yeah. Deborah, that might be an, an interesting experiment with a diocesan executive committee, which is a relatively small group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I have a, I have one more question. Speaking sure. of the crowdsourcing in a box, our, I think our priest um, just received the invitation maybe a day or two ago, and she, she sent it to the exec, Vestry Executive Committee. I'm on the Vestry Executive Committee. Um, saying, what do you think about this? Is this something we should do? And I said, unfortunately, I was on the training with him already, and they're already at capacity uh, with a wait list. Um, Cynthia, but, for you, we would take your congregation. If you still want to do it, you see, I'm, I'm breaking my yes. own. Yes. <laughs> so Cynthia, we would, if you want to do it, reach out to me, and I'll, I'll put you guys in there. In thank fact, you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you know, so, so just go ahead and, but reach out to me today because the, okay. the one part that everybody has to be present on is next Tuesday's training on right. the clarity part. So make sure that if you're able to be there, that two people from your congregation need to be there next Tuesday. If you're able to do that, I'll get you the agreement. The rest is on your own schedule. But next Okay, Tuesday, thank you. Other questions, thoughts, anything else? Well, thanks everyone. You guys have been a great team. Nobody, nobody called me like crazy and, and, and hung up on me, which is always good. That's a good start. Uh, it, this is fun. Uh, just a quick little reminder and plug that tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's Friday, we have uh, two things going on. One, if you're on Facebook, you remember how I mentioned Hard Edge? 
uh, the Hard Edge group, they do a ton of workshops that are really good. And they put them all on Facebook Live. So uh, look up Hard Edge. I'm going to put it here on the chat box, how you spell it. Uh, it, it Hard Edge. Uh, no, don't, don't try to correct my spelling. Uh, Hard Edge. Look that up on, it, it's from the UK. It's from the Church of St. Uh, St. Martin in the Fields in, in London. Sam Wells and the team there, Jonathan, and, and, and uh, they're all just really good people there. Uh, and they, they, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be part of a workshop about how to grow our online communities, how to make them be communities when you're online. It's an ongoing conversation where, where I'll be bringing in some insights of other things that I'm learning along the way. So that's at, uh, let's see, it's 830, 8.30 Pacific. So that would be 11.30 Eastern, 4.30 London time. We have all demographics now presented here. So join us for that. And then tomorrow afternoon, even if you can't be there present for it, I encourage you to go to tritank.org and sign up for Faith in the Future. That's the webinar that I mentioned with Bob Johansson, the author of the book uh, that I have here, that his, his insights are invaluable. More than that, though, more about just like, what are the insights? Remember how we talked about insights at the beginning? You can glean some insights from Bob tomorrow as, as secondary research. But second to that is that he's also going to give you the framework of our minds, how we should be approaching looking at trends, what type of leadership skills we need to do that. Because that's what it's all about, right? How to escape boxes in a post-categorical future. And so he's, he's going to give us some insight about that. So I would encourage you, even if you cannot be present, uh, sign up so that you'll get a link so you can watch the webinar later uh, because it'll be w well worth your, your, your time uh, to get some of those insights that, you'll, that Bob will have with us. Cool. So, oh, wait, somebody else has an uh, Deborah has an announcement. Well, I do just um, to say thank you very much for um, this. It was we Jody and I loved um, your presentation when we were in New Orleans, and you definitely, um, you know, brought brought uh, such a good spirit to um, to this program. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm sure we'll be meeting again, and we'll be reporting into you and trying to figure out new things for our our diocese. And, and so I just want to turn the page a little bit to remind everybody um, that we are doing these webinars and um, we have another opportunity coming up in July. Is that right, Jody? Jody's our yes. my fact person. So we have uh, another opportunity coming up for a webinar in um, July and that is being sponsored by um, Renewal Works. Isn't that right? Yes. By, Re by Renewal Works. And so if you love Renewal Works and Forward Movement and uh, um, uh, we've done Renewal Works at uh, St. Columba and we absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And um, now with people so isolated during um, the pandemic and things, Renewal mm -hmm. Works is a really great offering. There's uh, individual Renewal Works and then there's also um, a parish way. And you, you might want to remember that we also, as congregational development, pay for five parishes every year, five parishes every year to go through the renewal works, um, renewal works process. And so please make sure to stay tuned for that. We have our dates. And then we have a program coming up on stewardship, which, you know, we all need money. And, uh, and, uh, and so please don't hesitate. We, we're going to keep up with these webinars um, no matter what. So thanks for taking the time, everyone. Thank you to Lorenzo coming um, to us all the way from California. And uh, I know I've got a million ideas. So <laughs> thank you for that. So everyone go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. Bye, thank everybody. you, Deborah. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.